Hi, David Bizard here, and you, my friends, are watching Paratech 10. Let me quickly run through some of our, uh, how shall I say, um, conditions of broadcast here. First, we don't tolerate BS or poor products. Second, we don't give mediocre products any airtime except in rare occasions. Any products that are really good, we promote the heck out of them. So you've got that. Now, the next thing is, I've been dabbling or building or seriously involved as a professional in race building for 64 years. And my best year as an engine builder, I scored out of eight engines I built, a combined 169 first places Championship wins, five of those. Lap records, best time of days, and pole positions. Right, that's just from eight engines. So, trust me, I really do believe I've got something to pass on to anybody who wants to perform a similar feat with their engine building skills. So why the prolonged intro there? to make sure you understood where I was coming from. It's simple. We're going to do some profile bashing here, which involves somebody who is highly qualified. So I need that person to know that they're up against not some buffoon, but somebody who is also highly qualified, practically. These things, a lot of what I've done, I've done with my bare hands, right? And the person that we're going to tackle here and this is part two of this series, is perpetrating company of our BS here is, now let me put my glasses on for this, Schmidt Motor Works. And they are down in California at Huntington Beach, right? And what I'm going to talk about are the words and text put out by one John Schmidt. Now, you might think I'm picking on an individual here, but this guy is supposedly some sort of consultant engineer. Do you want a consultant engineer who has this capability of giving wrong information? I'll let you decide, right? But look, I'm a consultant engineer as well. And when I do a job and sign along the dotted line for doing a job, I guarantee results. If those results aren't met, I will not only pay back the company concern, but I'll pay them 10% more than they paid me just to cover their time and trouble. And guess what? In 60, no, 50 years of doing this, I've had nothing but satisfied customers. Very satisfied. That's why at age nearly 80, I still am loaded up with work. Now, let me tell you where the story started, so that you have an idea of what's going on. I have, for many years, been trying to educate the automotive populace, or the performance automotive populace, of the errors in the information that they get about camshafts. It, it is rife, and still so today. And just to help matters out, I thought I would introduce to the public a simple formula that would, for a small block Chevrolet. Calculate the low centerline angle the cam needed to be on. You would not believe how much flack I had to take over that. Now this is all from people who've never tested this, right? Um, uh, following is a graph of the data that generates the line for the formula that I'm about to show. That's my 128 formula. 
Okay, well, here we go. This is the line generated from around about 350 or so dyno runs which we could accumulate data from. The um, spread of the data wasn't very much. The outside amount was about one square above and one square below. So we're looking at a mean deviation that's pretty small. Now, the formula for that line is this, that 128 line, the second line down. Now then, that is based on what happens in reality. So, it cannot be wrong. It is an empirical equation based on what actually happens in real life, period. Now, John was the worst offender here that I came across. I'm sure there was some worse, but some were almost as bad. But here's the deal. John's first comment was, it does not scale. You can't apply it to any engine with a bore bigger than this or smaller than that. Well, you know, there are not many three and a half inch bore small block Chevrolets around. It worked very well from a bore of about three and seven eighths to a bore of about four and eight, right? Of course it won't work on a lawnmower, John. It's not designed. It's a small block Chevrolet. That guy went on and on and on about it not scaling. And then, and then I happened to mention it had lots of uh, polynomials in my proper equation, which I listed all the things it would do other than just calculate lobe center line angle. Not a word. A whole list. Must have been about this long. Not a word. And, um, and I even asked him, why would I want to expand on this simple 128 equation when I already have done this complicated equation which calculates it much, much, to a much finer degree, plus all those other things? Nope, got no reply. And I found ultimately that John was incapable of answering even a yes, no uh, answer. If I contradicted him on something, he would come in from another angle and say this was wrong or that was wrong. One of the things he said was, uh, I can tell there's no polynomials in that, that, that formula. Well, John, that's another point you're wrong on. It's stuffed full of polynomials, right? I, if it wasn't for polynomials, this, this stuff wouldn't work, right? So please note that, John. You're up the swanee on that. Now, so we kind of get over this 128 formula, and here it is again, uh, business, and uh, that all quietens down. But I want to point out one thing here, and I did point out this to a lot of people who questioned it. And I had a lot of people say, the lobe center line angle is a product, not an input. Well, let me give you my standard phrase for that, BS. You are so wrong, it's unbelievable. Stop and think about your 10th grade math and you'll come to the same, you'll come to the right conclusion. Now then, let's move on. We've got this business about the camshaft, right? And what I did there is I started a story. It's a story that involves two of my late friends, Sig Gerson and Harvey Crane. So let me go on and tell you all about the sequence of events that brought me to this point here. The story starts off way back when, maybe about 1972-ish, when I was staying with Sig Gerson down at his very fancy house down in Seal Beach. Right? That's where he had his collection of cars and his 55-foot twin-screw diesel yacht, which he'd hopped up the two Cummins in there. This 55-footer was built as a comfort boat, i.e. it was wide in the beam and Sig likes to entertain. So this had a dining room on the top deck that was good to see 10 or 12 people easy with a waiter to be able to go around. Anyway, the thing was he showed me the engines, right? And he said, listen to this. He started them up and boy, they sure sound crisp. And he said, listen, right? And I said, boy, what have you done to them? He says, blowers have been upgeared, 
Uh, they got different cams, heads have been modified, uh, exhaust system. He said, I, I've, I've got something like double the power from these engines. I said, well, how fast would it go? He said, I can get this tubby lady up on the plane. He said, how about 24 knots, right? And I said, what for this? He says, yep, speed up from 12 to 24. He says, but it drinks fuel. He said, I used uh, to go to San Diego from here, which is 200 miles, I used 250 gallons of diesel, right? So it does approximately 0.8 mile per gallon, right? So and I said, well, rather than you and me. Now I know why, why I like sailing ships. Anyway, here's the story. Enough of this side talk. Here's the story. Um, Sig came back from vacation and there was a letter on his desk from Ford Motor Company. So he opened it and it, this letter arrived the day he went away. And he, it was a long holiday and I think it was one of those trips where he visited me. right? And anyway, the, uh, uh, the deal was that Ford Motor Company wanted a camshaft done for their big block range so that they could put it in the catalogue so that the drag racers could buy this with a genuine factory part number and put in their so-called stock Fords. And he looked at it and they needed, the, the expiration date for him responding was just three days. Panic. Well, he went through all of his profiles in a rush. Now I'm relating how he told me this. All of his profile masters in a rush and, and couldn't find one with the lift limit that they put on that was suitable. So he got one that had the opening ramp and closing ramp and duration he wanted and he filed the top of the master off. Literally, he thought, I'll, I'll just make up a new master. But for now, I'll file it off, put it in the lathe and run it and see if it's smooth. So that's what he did. Reduce the lift by, I don't know, something like at the valve by about 50 or 60 thousands. Anyway, he stayed up all night, ground the camshaft, did all the heat treatment on it, everything else, and the next day mailed it off, next day air or special delivery. So it arrived basically on the last day, right? And he thought, well, that was a sweat. Probably won't win, they've sent that, this out to everybody, right? And anyway, uh, he gave Harvey Crane a call, who he was pretty good friends with. And Harvey said, oh yeah, I did mine the other day. I, I generated a new profile and I really spent the time getting the dynamics down to a T with this. And, you know, we, we ran a, pro a test one on the Spintron and all that good stuff. I sent that off about uh, two or three days ago, four days ago, right? So anyway, all is quiet for a while. Maybe two months. Then Sig gets a letter, special delivery letter. His cam won the contest. It made more torque and horsepower than anybody else's. Sig, I think he called Harvey and he said, hey, no good looking in the mail for a see if you've won that contest, I've won it. And, and he said, oh, oh right, well, okay. You know, that's life. And uh, he said, yeah, I can't believe it, you know. Uh, I only had three days to prep that and I got a cam and filed the, the, the top off the cam, right? But he said it's obviously on the right timing. I can't believe this. I spent ages on the Dynamics, on the Spintron. It was just beautiful, right? And you beat me. Uh, and I want to make the point here. Valve event timing is more important than valve dynamics. Immediately I posted this in, I think it was in the forum, John Schneider said, no, that may have applied years and years and years ago, but with modern cam designs it doesn't. And I thought to myself, where the heck is this guy coming from, right? And I thought to myself, I know what I'll do when I've got time, I'll challenge him to a duel, right? He picks a cam that he knows has good dynamics out of a catalog from a reputable cam company, anyone who wants. And I will generate with the same duration a 
flat tappet, three arc cam. Now you can't get more simple than a three arc cam, right? It's very easy to design a three arc cam. The original Cosworth F1 engines had three arc cams. They, they soon changed to a polynomial design, but originally they had a three arc cam. So it was okay for a Formula One engine to start with. Anyway, John insists that I am wrong. And funny enough, I made a post challenging him uh, and saying that I was going to do this video. And somebody, and I can't remember the guy's name, I should do, but you know, that, that's it, said that John's right and l several other major cam grinders have agreed with him. And I thought, well, pff, they're all wrong. Now, let's look at this. Let's say I design a three arc cam. Let's look at an extreme situation. I design a three arc cam and we'll say 280 degrees and it lifts the valve half an inch and uh, it's timed on 108 lobe center line angle which is exactly one of a 350 with a 10 to 1 compression once when it's got 202 15 valves in it and we're talking about a 350 right and we put that cam in four degrees advanced it will make in spite of a three arc profile it will make very good power so long as the spring can overcome any dynamic problems with the cam profile itself which of course I would pick a spring that was appropriate now then let's look at the situation where we have a cam that you pick out of a catalog right but we'll say it's a roller cam right now then let's say that roller cam has 112 lobe center line angle and they very often do so you put that cam in and Although it may be 280 degrees duration, it's opening the valves at a different time. Well, that cam, it's opening the valves and closing them at the wrong time. Will that cam make more horsepower than the first one? No, it won't. Now, let me tell you what prompted me to write that uh, post on the forum in the first place. Um, I was going through some of my dyno curves and believe you me I have tens of thousands of them right and I came across on my uh, computer screen uh, a test that showed the dyno figures for a flat tap at 280 degree cam on a 108 lobe center line angle in this 350 and dyno at mule engine. And on the same page, it had a 288 hydraulic roller cam on 112. Now, the roller cam had something like 20% more area, opening area, but it was on 112, and that's the wrong load center line for the engine. On the other hand, 108 was the perfect one for the engine, but with a smaller cam. And, and here's the thing, I looked at this and had a chuckle to myself. The flat type it cam was about 20 horsepower more than the uh, uh, hydraulic roller on the wrong lobe center line angle. And also, the foot pounds was up by about 20. So that made my point, and I thought, oh, well, sometime or other, I've got to write this Sigerson uh, uh, versus Harvey Crane uh, approach to uh, cam profiles and I did and it's got me into this thing with John right but the bottom line is this dyno figures prove that I'm right and I can absolutely guarantee anyone arguing has not done as many dyno tests as I have and here's the other thing I'm going to make a bet that John compared with me is a total neophyte when it comes to dyno testing. I bet you he's only done a, at best a few hundred. Anyway, enough said for that. Let's get on with where I was going. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but this here, and let me get up closer with it. If we rotated about that center there, this cam here, will have 
just about the smoothest profile you can get. How well will it do for generating horsepower? Zero, like I said. So, John, your deductive powers are definitely falling short here. So that would preclude you from ever being on my team. One more thing before I close here. I know there's going to be those critics of mine who are going to say, well, this program was a load of BS. Let me tell you something here. BS is an opinion. I don't have an opinion. I have a dino. If you don't like what you see, don't take it up with me. Take it up with Mr. Dino. That's where these results come from. Anyway, that's it for today. I will say though that if any of you know of products that are something of a ripoff and statements that are BS, put them in the comments below and let's address them, right? I like having uh, subscribers contribute to the uh, content of this channel. So with that, don't let me forget to remind you, subscribe, like, share, and notify. And I will see you soon. Thank you for watching.